That should be a huge red flag, by the way. Half of the mentors out there didn't have a good enough fitness business to be providing you advice, never mind the staff that they're employing. It's easy to take someone who's got a million followers and improve their business, in my opinion. We've got no spaces. I've done that. In this video, we are going to talk to you about what you should look for when hiring a fitness business mentor. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter and we're here today to help you with your fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're gonna to talk about what you should be looking for. Pick us. Sorry. In a business mentor. We believe it's us. one that wears a hat and one yeah. that wears glasses is probably so, the best bet. You um, do the math. Basketball related helps, but if it's just a normal hat, that's fine. That Golf is fine. related is okay. That but, is uh, fine. But yeah, that's, yeah that's What else have I got? Tattoos on your tattoos, arm, like, you know, anything like that. Neck like, tattoo. Just, um, one's small, one's a bit bigger. You know, a little bit, yeah. Uh, you, just, you decide what that bigger means. It's yeah. up to you. I mean, I, I know what it means. Yeah. But, you know, you well, we all know like, what it means. We all know what it means. I know what, so. he's, I know what he's saying. I know what he's doing. Um, but yeah, look, uh, this has come about because uh, I, I say this to people on, on consultation calls all the time. Positioning. It's called positioning yourself. Um, it's putting yourself higher up than other people. Um, that's a spoon. So, um, I've been told by my mentor. <laughs> yeah, pull out the spoon. That's going to work. The, I mean, the microphone is fixed and you don't you don't. Yeah, but he said it's have because a it's a spoon yeah. that captures the attention. They'll all so. be commenting on that now. The Just have a spoon. Algorithm. Um, we were saying how, and I always say this on calls, I say that I like to think that you wouldn't be able to tell who our clients are based on their Instagram. And what I mean by that is that we see coaches all the time that come to us. And when I get on a call with them, I know what mentorship they've done before based on their Instagram, if they've done one, not all of them have done one. And it's because so many of them use the same templates, the same copy templates, the same style of Canva things, the same way of putting across social proof, the same way you create your Instagram bio. It just becomes so predictable. And I use it as a, as a positioning standpoint where I go, well, look at these four people. I bring them all up on the screen and I go, look at these four people. Do you think these people look the same in terms of their content, in terms of their messaging, in terms of this? And every time, no, of course they don't. No, they don't, no, they don't. Well, they all work with me. They're all my clients. Um, I don't throw any rogue ones in there. That'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? But there's there's just so many different ways of doing this. And our biggest thing is about being yourself and, and making sure that you create content in a way that's yours. You have a message that's yours and you have a niche that's yours. Um, and I think that's one of our, one of our biggest strengths. And, and I feel like, one of the selling points for a lot of mentorships is all this done for you, templated things, like you don't have to think about anything. That should be a huge red flag, by the way, because you're just gonna end up like every other person in their mentorship, to the point where I've got a client who came from a mentorship and about six, seven months ago, and she now actively sends me posts that are from that mentorship from someone that she follows, because she's like, if, it, if I wasn't with you, I'd be posting this right now. If I was, because you know it's based around January or Easter or 12 weeks of summer or whatever, all the same, all done by the same copyright, the same graphic designer and just handed out to the hundreds of people in there. And it's just such a huge, huge red flag. Yeah, so that would be, um, that would be one thing to, to probably look out for. It might, um, it might feel like that's what you need because as a coach, you, you, know, you probably know that you could get better at your content. You probably want to get more leads in and you think that that's going to be through um, having better content, which it, which it is to some degree. It is going to be that. But the answer isn't getting somebody else to do your content for you. The answer isn't having somebody drip feed or spoon feed you um, exactly what you need to post because you're not going to ever learn the skills necessary to be able to have longevity within your business. It's again, it's 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 rubbish. It's it's the you it's just, the you opposite. Just, of you're what just you relying be doing. on the next template to come through. You're just relying on the next thing to be given to you. It's it's like they, it's just like you know they they do this in a way so that you need them. I, I'm convinced that's why they do it. Is that you need them. You have to carry on because you need the next template. Put it put it this way. Imagine if your mentor used template content and you saw five mentors posting the same stuff um, with the same five, five uh, opening five spaces and same the same captions and stuff you would instantly discredit them so the reason why you would probably select a mentor is probably because they would um, be authentic to themselves right and let's just say uh, if you were picking a coach because a lot of coaches do have coaches I bet you you're not coached by somebody that uses Canva and templated content. I bet you you're not because you know better, right? So why are you doing it mm -hmm. is my, my question. So that's one red flag. Um, the second red flag, uh, in my opinion, would be if the mentor uses performance coaches slash success coaches. That to me is a bit of a red flag um, when that's their main offering um, for multiple thousands of pounds, uh, often long lengthy contracts, um, 
that to me is a red flag in fact i had a consultation yesterday with somebody who's come from a big name that's been around the industry for ages um he was passed to a performance coach um he said he instantly lost any kind of credibility in the first couple of um meetings with the person because it was it was obvious that he didn't know what he was doing um it was regurgitated um information and his thought process was if this person had a big enough business coaching business why would he be working for this other person giving me business advice if his business was doing so well why would he need to come and do that which i agree with so my thought process and our thought process and it shows in the way that we've set things up is that your main package or the, the mentor's main package should be you get to work with them not their team because how do you know how well trained their team are? How um, do you know how bought into the company that that, that 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 person is? That person might be about to leave next month. For all you know, that could be happening, is that they're kind of sick of the mentorship and they're about to leave. So are you gonna get the best quality for your thousand pounds, 2000 pounds a month that, that you're paying? Or are you gonna get the best quality of service? With us, you know that we're not gonna leave because we are the business. And we're also the ones that have built the business. So we're the ones that have made the mistakes, that have tested, tweaked, brought on coaches, brought on staff, um, learned lessons, developed an app, rubbished an app, set up a group coaching, launched group coaching, ran it, w invested in, in certain things. We also were the ones who um, grew the fitness business to multiple six figures. The person that you've been given probably hasn't. They've probably hit like a 7K month and now all of a sudden they're, they've, been, they've been told that they've got enough experience to give you advice for multiple thousands so to me that's a red flag if you're on a consultation with somebody and you're told that you're going to be assigned a coach be really wary of that um because in my opinion half of the mentors out there didn't have a good enough fitness business to be providing you advice never mind the staff that they're employing mm. i think another one as well is like is is success stories something that we pride ourselves on i think is that you know we've we've got success stories that we can post and i've still got so speak a word, word, word of english doesn't speak a word of english <laughs> yeah came to me came to me um is that you know it's, it's easy to take someone who's got a million followers and improve their business in my opinion it's not hard that's not hard like that that, that person arguably doesn't even need that much help really um you know you look at some of the results that we've got we've taken people from sort of four or five clients online to 40 50 60 even more, some of yours, I think, even even further than that, you know. Will's got 99. Will's 99. Ah, it's not good enough. One short. One short, uh, triple fix. It's not good. Um, don't want him to get there, though. I don't want him to get there. No. Told him to stop before that. There you go. Why? Oh, tune in next week to find out. Um, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's that whole thing of, like, I think a lot of people... Um, will shout about their success stories about how well they've done and how well they've helped someone's business and, and like say it's easier to help someone who's already at that point of a huge following a huge email list or whatever and kind of grow them the hardest bit is is someone who's maybe got five to ten clients or 15 to 20 clients and taking them to that place where 60 70 80 clients 99 clients whatever it is 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 requires a lot more patience a lot more effort a lot more thinking along to a, alongside long-term thinking as well rather than just short-term stuff and i think there's quite a few mentors out there who just put up their poster boy or girl who's who's done really really well and they've got a huge following it's like okay how much did they actually help them how much did they actually do in, in from that point of view maybe a little bit of accountability but um you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, they won't get given a success coach um you know because they're the favorite or whatever and i think that's a huge part of it is like just remember that some of the people that we've worked with have gone from not a lot to a lot rather than just taking someone from a lot and give them a little bit extra like which i think a lot of other people do and they lord them all over social media as if that they've done something as if they've done it reality is that person was really successful already to, to begin with so that's one thing that i would say is that the amount of social proof as well i mean i think we still have the most out of anyone else. hands down there's no doubt i've got about fucking it. loads yeah i've got loads i've not posted yet that yeah. are in the back burner and i haven't posted them because we've got no spaces I've done that. Yeah, and, and and I've also got some as well. This is going to sound pretty bad, but I've got some that I don't think, in terms of like the numbers, stack up compared to some, compared to some of those we've posted before. Like I just had a client just yesterday t tell me she's leaving um, because she's moving back to it doesn't really matter why anyway she's moving anyway needs to needs to kind of consolidate where she's at but the numbers don't sound that impressive to go from seven clients to say 18 it doesn't sound amazing but when you know how much she's charging how much it's changed her life to me it's like that is a really really important part of it um and we also get things like video testimonials we get video from people saying how good things are and again i just don't see anyone doing this 
Mm-hmm. I just see everyone else just plastering the, oh, you made a 7K month. Oh, that means, you know, oh, he's got a six-figure business all of a sudden. It's like, well, he's had one good month. That's not how it works. And they extrapolate all these numbers and all these details. And we, we know, we've heard from people within these mentorships, within friends of, uh, of mentorships, we know that people are doing this. We know they're making up numbers, they're fudging numbers just to make themselves look good. And we're here sitting on social proof we haven't posted yet. A, because sometimes we think it doesn't quite compare to others, which it does, and it's stupid, and I will post, obviously. Or some that we're, we're full. We've, we don't have the space to take people on. It's like, just think about where you're putting your hard-earned cash and money and just ask yourself the question of, okay, if they're always taking people on all the time and they can always take on everyone, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. It's not for us to decide. Wow, it's not for us wow. to say, bad, but, bad. wow. Can we delete the, and we should really. Yeah, we probably. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's just another point I think it, that it's to make, you know, is are they just talking about the same people over and over again? Yeah, um, the social proof one is a, is a big thing. Like some, some, some of them have gotten zero social proof, like bar two big names. And I'm thinking of one specific, three big names. And, and all they do is talk about the big names. They don't actually talk about how much they've improved them. They just talk about the fact they work with them. And I've heard it from the big names that nothing actually changed. But, you know, it is what it is. So that's another kind of red flag. Um, I would probably say another one for me would be um, if you're seeing their faces plastered everywhere on ads, um, can they help you with your content as much as that they s- promise in um, mm-hmm. that they can? Because if they are reliant themselves on ads, um, what does it tell you about their organic content? That there's probably not as much emphasis and it's probably not as effective as it needs to be. Um, we've only just recently started to run ads and that's to the members group. We've built a business where we've got a waiting list. I've, I've now, I'm my June's full. So we're recording this in mid-March, right? I'm now having to um, bring on people for July. We've, we've built out of organic content out of results. So do you think that we're probably adequately equipped to help you with your organic content? I think, I think we are. To build your business the right way that isn't reliant on ad spend because that ad spend can change. The cost per acquisition can change. Um, you're gonna, you're still gonna be reliant on your creative copy or the video. You're gonna get a really poor quality of lead through um, ads. Whereas we focus on getting the best quality of leads, getting the best quality of clients, getting great results for the clients, and repeating that process over and over. Which do you think is built on the sturdier foundations? Mm. I know what I would, and, and with I would that think. as well, like we're, we're sitting here in, in our trainings, you know, in the members group, talking about how to boost your story views and how to get, you know, high high numbers. And, and I just, I, again, every other mentor is talking about get leads in. Here's the, here's the thing that you need to do on a sales call. Here's the thing you need to do in your DMs. And we're sat here going, actually, if you have more people watch your stories, again, in the longer term, you're going to get more people interested in your business. Like I'm at the weekend, I think I got, I think on Saturday, I got like 16, 1700 people view my stories, which is close to 25% of my following. I know Mike's posted recently that he got. Again, I think it was the same, 20% of your following, like watching your stories. Like two, um, just over 2,000. Yeah. yeah, and no one's talking about this stuff because I, I know for a fact that they have no clue how to do that. They have no clue. They, they're getting 2,000 people reach their, you know, on their ads, do you know what I mean? Like they're having to pay for that, whereas we're doing this organically through the things that we talk about on this channel, but also in the members group. Like, and that's what you're going to be doing is you're going to need to do that. You're going to need to boost those things up. Like I, I recently had a guy come from um again from another mentor he's working with paying him a lot of money a month and he's sitting there and he comes in and we always ask the questions on the questionnaire to get an idea and he sat there on between i'm not joking you 100 to 150 story views a day and he's got six and a half thousand followers and i'm like what is that person teaching you what are they talking about what are they helping you with because that doesn't you haven't got six and a half thousand followers then you've got 150 on a good day of people seeing your stuff really and there's so much that goes into the algorithm on stories and DMs. Like we talk about this all the time. We pick up on these trends and notice them. And it's the sort of stuff we wouldn't share on a YouTube video because it's, it's, it's the thing that makes us good at what we do, arguably, is understanding what's happening on Instagram right now. And we see all these people talking all this shit, posting all these videos, saying about the algorithm, saying about this. And we see all these people talking about how the algorithm's dead and it's changed and the content's not being seen by people. And I just laugh because I'm just like, you just shows how clueless you are because you're so out of touch with your audience. You're so out of touch with a niche. You're so out of touch with them because it's Actually, I don't think when I look at some people, never been easier to grow on Instagram. When you look at what they're doing and how they're doing it, whether you want to do those things or not is another question, right? But it has been done. You have to look at Eddie Abu and go a bit fucking crazy on Instagram. All of a sudden, you get loads of followers. He is mental, isn't he? He's is a bit mental. Can you say that? You can. Just did. Um, it's it's not about growth though. It's not about just growing for the sake of growing. 
Because again, I've seen many people do that and they don't have a better business for it. They don't because they're not focused on the story views, the engagement there, their email list, what that means, how to then create better relationships with people. And in a world where we've never been more connected, we've never been more disconnected as well with people and humans. And this is stuff that the mentors just aren't talking about. No one is mentioning it. And it's, I think, partly because they've got no idea how to do it. And B, I think it's because that they, again, they, they're just so out of touch. I, so think, touch. I think some coaches will go, ah, they're just saying that they've got no idea because that's the competition. We don't. We don't need to say anything. I've just said that we're full yeah. for however long. I don't. Yeah. We don't need to say anything. Can't work with us till July. Like, so I think yeah. when you've been around the industry for as long as that we have, we've we've been around other people that are doing the same things as us. Like you might put people on a pedestal, or they might try to put themselves on a pedestal. Let me tell you this: it's not what you think it is behind the scenes. None of them. Like nothing will be what it it seems. It's all smoke and mirrors. You're shown what they want you to show. Uh, what they want to show sorry so take everything with a pinch of salt you might think that somebody's an authority in reality you don't know how much money that their business made you don't know how long they were retaining their clients you don't know how good their coaching service was you don't know how many people are coming through organic you don't know anything you don't know what the results are like within the business currently they're showing you the things that they want you to see take it from us it's not what it seems i would say that the, the last red flag for me would be if you're if if you've got a mentor in your DMs, DMing you, that is often a VA, not always, but often a VA, that for me is a red flag because that's telling you something about how they go about their lead generation. If they're offering you to get on a podcast, if they're trying to be forceful around joining their scholarship, if they're trying to push their lead magnets towards you, think about what they're going to ask. Reply. <laughs> yeah, and you don't reply, and it's over, and it's over, and it's over, and it's over again, and it's responding to everything that you're doing and you're, you're not interested think think about what they're going to ask you to do mm -hmm. if that's the way of doing things is badgering you in volume because they don't care about your business some of them will tell you that they do they you know they of course they're going to want to come across empathetic and understanding and like they want to help you of course they are it wouldn't make sense to come across anything other than that would it if they're trying to get money out of you any of our clients watching this will attest to this at no stage did we do that to any of you and I can say that hands down because we've never done it we've, we've never done it we've had conversations with people based off of them responding to our stories or messages about this content or sending us what another mentor's done we've had conversations with people and genuine stuff and if somebody's at the Man United game and I've seen that they've won for the first time and God knows how long I'll go fucking hell picked a good game to go to I'll, I'll say something like that um, because it's just polite it's just friendly but if you're if, if there's a mentor that is consistently badgering and messaging, take it with a pinch of salt, right? That's a, that's a bit of a red flag. Yeah, so there you go. They're the red flags to look out for in terms of who you should be looking to for advice in our opinion. So um, look, if you do want to join a members group, you want to get a feel for what we're like, again, you can't work with this one-to-one -one until July anyway, so you may as well get in it. Have a little mooch around, see what we're about. Um, you'll pick something up and, well, by July, you could have gained five clients if you apply it all, so straight away, you won't even need to work with us. That's it. There you go. Mustang Sally. Have a good one.